you spoke to one of the shooter's coaches, and he gave you some, some information. What did he tell you? Yeah, you know, we're, we're getting a lot of insight. The, this fellow's name was Almir Dazdarovic. Uh, he was more than a coach. He was a, a, a teenage friend, uh, about nine years older than, than Mohammed Abu uh, Aziz. Uh, met him when he was just a child. They trained together in the gym as uh, in martial arts, became kind of a, a friend, mentor, coach, but also a fellow Muslim, worshipped with him. And I want you to just listen to what he describes to me is the person he knew, but also details about how this person he knew actually was traveling back and forth to the Middle East in the last couple of years and, and, and his demeanor over, the, over that time. Listen to the, what he had to say. What I observed, I observed him to be very meek, very, um, I mean, that kid never frowned. I mean, he always smiled, he always shook my hand, how you doing? I never heard him cuss, and that's what shocked me today when I heard, when, I, when they actually showed a picture on the news. I mean, I looked at the phone, and my eyes were just like, wow, I mean, I can't believe this. And it is, it, it is hard, it is hard in the community, it's not, I mean, we were friends in the past, you know, that's, that's the thing that gets to me. It's, I cannot tell you how somebody else lives the particular religion or if he or she got involved with the wrong people with the wrong ideology and got radicalized or become extreme for whatever reason. I can't tell you that. When was the last time you saw him? Say about maybe a month ago or so. Tell me about that. I just told you a minute ago. That's what I saw yeah. him after the Friday prayer. You saw him. And, and what was... Uh, just. I'm sorry to, to repeat it, what was the conversation like? He, he's talking to you like young okay. talking to you? Well, right? yeah, pretty much. I mean, we were walking at the end of the prayer, walked out, people were saying, shaking hands, saying bye. I saw him, I said, brother, how are you doing? I haven't seen you in a while. How's everything? You doing all right? Smiling, laughing, talking to me, no problems. And another guy just talked to on the phone about a case. He said he saw him just a day ago at a local store, and he said absolutely nothing. He was shaking hands, saying, you know, how are you doing? Everything's fine. So, again, what goes inside of a person or what's causing things, I, I don't know. His demeanor, that, that, that it was absolutely nothing on him that would show me that he was upset about something, you know. And I know that he moved out of the country about a year or two ago. He went back home and he stayed overseas. And I asked his dad about where's Muhammad. You know, I haven't seen him in a while and stuff. He said he moved back home. But I saw him a couple of times when he visited. Now, I'm not the one to speculate, but what happens overseas in a certain different environments, I don't know. Where was he overseas and when was he overseas? Uh, you would have to ask his family about that. I mean, so you say he went overseas for two years? A year or two ago when he actually went back. I think after he graduated UTC or something. Went back where? Uh, Jordan, Yemen, I don't know. I'm not sure which one. You're sure he was in the Middle East? Well, that's what I was told. His family so told you that? That's what I was told and that's what I went by. Did you ever talk to him about being in the Middle East? I asked him, how is everything, what you're doing? He said he's teaching kids, he's teaching wrestling and doing, you know, just, I said, how are you doing? I mean, is everything okay? He said, I'm doing well, but I'm doing really good. When, so what year are we talking about that, man? What, what <coughs> um, you mean when I talked to him? No, when was he, when do you think he was in the Middle East? About what time? About what time period? I, I'm, I'm telling you, I mean, when I, I talked to his dad, I mean, it's, it's a year or two ago is when he went back, but he, I mean, I've seen him several times when he came back here. So in the, in the last two years, I'm sure that he was overseas somewhere, you know. So we do know that authorities are trying to track those travels and track whom he may have talked to, met, uh, you know, begun conversations with. If he did travel back to the Middle East, if he took any of those connections back here with him, that's all part of the ongoing investigation. But you heard in that that just a month ago, uh, this, this mass murderer was at a mosque here in Chattanooga, praying with fellow Muslims, and there were no signs that anything was wrong.